Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome everybody that's at home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Father, speak to us today. Give us a word from your heart. Give us a word. We want to hear from you, Lord. Help me, Father. So many people are just now waking up to the calendar, which is really cool. How many is your first year going through the holidays? Raise your hand. First year going through the holidays. Amen. Cool. So the calendar is a little tricky at first for a couple years. Just be real. But the more you study it, Kevin and Amanda, the more you get it figured out, right? It just takes some time. It takes a little time. But I'm going to talk about the calendar just a little bit. So your days begin in the evening. Weeks are on a Seven-day cycle, days are evening to morning, then it turns evening to morning. Months are on a 12-month cycle, and the months begin in Nisan. It says this will be the first um, month of the year for you. And years are on a whole different cycle. Years are counted from the fall feast to the fall feast to the fall feast. So you got days, weeks. Months, years, all happening at the same time. And so it takes a little bit of time to like kind of get a handle on the calendar. So I'm going to talk just briefly about the calendar. So March 26th was the first day of the first month on God's calendar. It's called what? Yes, New Year, Happy New Year, yes. And so um, we, uh, we celebrated that, right? And then, so if you count all the days, it takes you to April 8th, which was just this past Wednesday, and that was Passover. The 14th day of the first month is Passover, right? And this is where the calendar gets like a little bit of tricky, 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 okay? Because you've got several things going on all at once. This day right after Passover is the 15th. It's also the first day of unleavened bread, and it's also a high Sabbath. You've got lots of stuff going on on one day. So in the middle of the week, we have a Sabbath. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread is seven days. Right? Day two, three, and then you get a weekly Sabbath, and that's where we are right here. And then you have this day, the day after the Sabbath, which is first fruits, day four of unleavened bread. And then we start, we start, start doing something called counting. We start counting. Tomorrow we start counting days and weeks. So now we add another element to the calendar. It's now the first of the Omer, Omer. So then you have the fifth day of unleavened bread, day two of the Omer, right? Then you go to here, Wednesday, like Pastor was saying, seventh day of unleavened bread, 21st day of the month, fourth day of the Omer, high Sabbath, I know your head's exploding, right? <laughs> Just keep coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're, it's like, it's like Acts 15, Pastor. We can't pile it all in your brain at once because it took the pastors years to figure it out. 
But what the benefit you get is that we, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we condense it down. Like the years that it took us to figure it out, we make it and we just go, we can put it real quick and give it to you. And God is in the process of fast tracking everybody. Like I said, my uncle just learned Passover, went live on Wednesday. I'm like, pretty brave, uncle. He went live. My uncle went live. He sent me a text. He said, I just did a live stream. I messed it up so bad. <laughs> it's pretty gutsy. But I was proud of my uncle. Amen. Assemblies of God ordained pastor in North Carolina, Hickory, and hanging out with uh, Marco and them. And hopefully we'll see what happens over there. Get a little kehila. Right? Okay. So we start counting the Omer. And then when we get here, day seven is week one. So we count days and weeks. Then, look, we add another element. Next, like on the 25th, it becomes the first day of Iyar. 14th day of Omer, second week. Keep counting. Dun, 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 dun. And then we get right here. Day 50 is called Wu'ot, weeks. Okay? And we're going to have a big shebang right there. Right? Big Holy Ghost party. If you don't like tongues... You might want to stay quarantined that day. I'm just, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding, Pastor. Keep it in order. <laughs> Less me and loiter here, okay? <laughs> oh, boy. I haven't been able to teach to people. It's going to be a good day. So, I'm going to talk about the calendar a little bit more in Leviticus 23. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when you be come, edit, Matthew, I haven't sent these to you yet. When you come into the land which I give you, and you shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the what? Of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. That's debatable in... Uh, the community, but it's the weekly Sabbath. The morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And now, here's the next instruction. So we're following the holidays, right? The feasts, the moadim, appointments. Everybody say appointments. So the next instruction that we have, we got Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, right? Which we're doing, right? Then the next instruction is this. You, say me, shall count for yourself. Say count for myself. Okay, that's what you're going to do next. You're going to learn to count for yourself. From the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. What does this say? Until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number 50 days. See, seven Sabbaths takes you here until the day after the seventh Sabbath takes you to 50 Shavuot. Shavua is week. Shavuot is weeks. So, so look, the name of this teaching is this, Pesach. Say that slowly, that it becomes two words, everybody. So what we're going to see is the word Passover in Hebrew is Pesach, but when you take it and you split it into two words, Pesach, it means the mouth speaks. Say that. But what's interesting is we've been shut down from speaking long enough. It's time for the believers in the church to rise up in this generation, in this season, and get out of your house and preach the gospel. We've got to take this mouth, which if you've been to Walmart, like literally the, the, like, it's like they're covered. The mouth has been stopped in this season. 
from speaking. So we're going to fix that by doing Pesach. How many of y'all did Pesach? You started working already towards fixing the shut mouth. But now you have another job to do. This is the hardest holiday that I've ever tried to follow. Because to truly understand Pesach and Shavuot, you have to actually count 50 days and not miss a day. To literally, and now I've, I've gotten to where in my, in my um, devotional time, I will, because what you have to do, you have to literally with your mouth say a formula that I'm going to show you. And it's not enough to think it and look at the calendar because you count for yourself. You have to say the words out loud. And it's easy. You count to 50, but no, it's not. It's the hardest. The, inter, the interim days between first fruits and Shavuot is 50. It's hard to count to 50 because you have to remember every day. So this year I'm actually going to set a reminder on my phone. Okay? I encourage all y'all to do it with me. Set a reminder on your phone every day for 50 days that you actually, I'll show you the formula, and we're going to actually count. Why? We're going to learn today the power of the rectification of using our mouth, starting at Purim, when, when, when prophetically it's like, you cannot remain silent in such a time as this. One month later, our mouths are shut, and we're trapped in our homes. But prophetically, when we speak the Passover story and then count the days, God is supercharging us, preparing us for an outpouring of His Holy Spirit, I believe. And listen, family, Pentecost Shavuot is not as much about speaking in tongues as it is that God would give us a power to be a witness. That's literally what it's about. Supercharged, yes, you'll speak in tongues, but you should be a powerful witness for the gospel. That's really what it's about. Because if you tongue, you can do that all you want, but if you're not sharing Yeshua, you're wasting the seed of the Holy Spirit. Counting the Omer is a physical act. It's not enough to count the Omer on a calendar or in your mind. One actually has to stand up and utter the words. So in order to do that, our, 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 our Jewish brothers, the sages of Israel, have created a formula that we recite. And you say, today, tomorrow, you're going to say, today is day one of week one, of counting the Omer. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us by your commands and commands us to what? Count the Omer. And then you do the, you do the formula. This is the word Omer. It's a, it's a, it's a weight measurement. It's a weight, it's a measurement. This is the word, what is this word, somebody? Amar, what is Amar? Somebody? Amar is what in English? To speak. This is speak. If you add a Lamed, it's to, to speak. So there's a connection because you look at these words and phonetically and almost the spelling is identically. identically. Tom. <laughs> How am I doing, Tom? Thank you, because I'm messing up these words. And so we're going we're gonna to get back to this, but you have to use your mouth. You have to speak as you count. Now, now, I told you about the calendar for many reasons. Number one, because it says, these are the feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim in their appointed season. And so we proclaim the feast in this fellowship that it is time to celebrate Passover, unleavened bread, the two high Sabbaths, and first fruits. We proclaim that. Prophetically, that's happening. 
But also I wanted to talk a little bit about it because I wanted you to know that there's two calendars because you count, you count months on one, with one being this month, two being Iyar, three being Sivan, but you count years from the fall feast to the fall feast to the fall feast. On Yom Kippur, you blow the shofar and you make a proclamation. If it's a Yovel, it's the counting starts there. So years and months are different in God's calendar. So what happened is last year at Feast of Trumpets, we, we entered into the, the year that our Jewish brothers are counting and reckoning. It's called 5780. How many of y'all knew that? 5780, right? Now, we looked at this, many people, and when I began to study it last year, I even spoke about this during our holiday season. And we, we proclaimed that this year was the year of the mouth because 80, because pay, Aleph, Bet, Gimadol, Hey, Vav, Zan, Chet, Yod, Kaf, Lama, Menu, Samak, Ayin, Pay, Pay is 80. Pay is 80. Say that. So this is the year of the mouth. Say mouth. Many people, not just Matthew, many people were getting downloads from the Lord. People that I trust spiritually, and they, everybody's got the same thing. They're like, this is the mount, this is the, this is the year from, from, from Feast of Trumpets all the way to the Feast of Trumpets, which is coming up, right? Is the year of, of proclaiming the goodness of the Lord and using the mouth to, to prophesy and declare and make decrees. And I'm not one of the crazy Pentecostals that decrees and declares and all that stuff, but there's truth in it, family, right? Okay. So, it's the, it's, it's the season, we said last year, that it, we were moving into the season of the mouth, right? Yes? Now, this is pay in pictograph Hebrew. It's a mouth. It's a little crooked mouth, kind of like how I smile when I giggle, like, hmm, like that, right? That's a mouth. Pay is mouth. Pay is also when you draw a face here, right? You see the face and you got the hair, right, and the ear. This is the mouth, Right? Pay, do you see the pay? It's already red. I can't draw on something that's red. <laughs> so we all begin to talk about it and say, this is the year of the mouth. So this year would be a year of moving by prophetic acts of our voice. Say voice. And, and, and we begin to proclaim this year as a year of prophecy using our mouth. Say breath. Pay, breath, mouth. To speak the oracles of Yah. That's what we were all saying. Now, now look at where we are today. We are locked up as a people. Now, like, uh, see, I believe... Ain't owed Milvado, there's nothing but God. Amen. So he allowed all this to happen. And we kind of, as a church, I kind of see like now, even as we were worshiping, like God put us in timeout. You got kids? Timeout. Like, you're grounded. Now what we should have done as a body is prayed. <laughs> but we busted buckles, right? We just kept eating. <laughs> I mean, look, it ain't just you. My wife and I, we like, we're like, today, like yesterday, we're like, when are we starting the fast? I'm like, well, might as well push it till Monday. <laughs> Who wants to do it today? It's Shabbat, right? <laughs> it's always good to make it go to Monday. And then it might go to the next Monday. Who knows? But anyways, that's how it works. But we just sat around. We didn't pray enough. Listen, family, I want to get serious for a minute. We as a church failed. So, the timeout that God had instituted for his people because we didn't pray, now the enemy is snuck in and extending the time frames. Each one of the Moadim, the feasts, will rectify a part of the body. Again, I've said this over and over. The written oracles are in here. And in here tells us about the living oracles. And the living oracles come with traditions, not a bad word, traditions 
that Paul taught several places. You just look the Greek word up. It means Jewish traditions of law, even oral. How do you welcome Shabbat? How do you say bye to Shabbat? How do you do Passover? How do you do the holidays? How, why do we blow the shofar a hundred times? There's reasons. You know, when we celebrate trumpets, all that stuff. So every one of the holidays comes with things that we do, right? And you don't have to, and we're not going to get legalistic. But if you, if you do the things that it says in the Bible about the holidays, even if you don't take the extra stuff and you just do what the Bible says, each one of the holidays will rectify a part of the body. Pay, suck, the mouth speaks is given to us so that when we tell the story, we're fixing the sins of the mouth. The first sin in the Bible was mouth related. So even the two things that we do on Passover, pay, suck, the mouth speaks, you tell the story. In telling the story, you're rectifying the mouth. The other thing you do is you don't eat leaven and you eat matzah, fixing the original sin that happened in the garden. It's deep stuff. This is the word sicha, means have a conversation. When you shorten it, it turns to sach. And even though Pesach has a psalmic, not a, uh, a machine, when you say them, they are, they sound identical. Pesach. So every holiday is infused with a special energy to help us work on a particular character trait and to develop certain aspects of our lives. The mitzvot of the holiday are tools, the, the, the deeds. Everybody say deeds. What is the law simplified? What is the law? The law is instruction. Torah is instruction. Say that. It's so simple. It's like this. Some things you do, some things you don't do. That's the law. Simplified. What is the Torah? Some things you do, some things you don't do. Simple. Very simple. So the things that we do and that we don't do are given to us as tools as tools. So the primary mitzvah as pa of Passover is to use the mouth to tell the story. The most common sin among humanity is connected to what comes out of our mouth. Like all of us mess that up. Like what does James say? You got this big boat and this little flapper causes problems, right? Hmm. So these two holidays, are really interesting because they're connected. <clears throat> and they both deal with the rectification of the mouth. Speaking and eating and fasting. And even when you read Isaiah 58, there's a lot of people that say that's not about the weekly Sabbath. They say it's about the high Sabbath called the, the Shabbat Shabbaton, the Sabbath of all Sabbaths called Yom Kippur, Isaiah 58, because it says don't even speak your own words. Why? You're really, really, really on Yom Kippur. You're trying to fix what was messed up in the garden. That's one of the main reasons we wear white and we don't eat because it was food that messed us up in the garden. So, when you do Passover and you tell the story and you eat the matzah, there's stuff spiritually that happens that we don't even understand. The sins of speech are so bad... That in the days of the tabernacle and temple, if you messed up with your mouth, it would literally produce on you. 
I talk about this a lot because Leviticus is my favorite book, and the Torah portions of, of Zara'at and, and, and Mitzorah, those are like my favorite stories in the Bible. They're amazing. They're so deep. But what's interesting is when the, when the tabernacle and the temple were on earth, and if you used your mouth to sin, literally uh, uh, you would be hit with a skin affliction. And the priest was the only one that could look at you and say, eh, you got into poison ivy, or, ooh, you've been, uh, you've been saying stuff you shouldn't say. You're clean, poison ivy, just whatever, doTERRA. And then you, <laughs> you're outside for seven days. Come back, let me look at you later. What's interesting, family, hear me. This is, this is what the Lord was showing me. Because in the church, we haven't been using our mouth the right way, and we've been using it in a bad way, we literally got quarantined. We got a timeout. It's my version of some of the, like, current events that I'm thinking through, okay? And the other thing that would have, have to happen is you come near somebody with the skin affliction... And they had to say, unclean, unclean. Now, a friend of mine put this on Facebook. And I did a little research and found out some truth in it. Now, again, this is my take on some stuff, okay? When you look at Leviticus 13.4, it is giving us what happens when somebody gossips, they get leprosy on their skin, and they have to come to the priest, and the priest looks at him and says, oh, okay, is, is, the, is the sore white and embedded in the skin, or if not, and if it is, then you've got seven days, you're quarantined. <clears throat> okay. Now, this, this, if you use your mouth in the wrong way, you get a quarantine. It's Torah. And I'm thinking to myself, like, God just put us all in a timeout. Why? We all have been sinning with our mouth. Whether it is, like, intentionally speaking bad about people, gossip, lying, stretching the truth, or we've just been sitting quiet. While people are literally fearing for their life, we should have been preaching the gospel. We messed up. I messed up. When you talk bad about people, the sages teach that it will affect your heart and your lungs and esophagus and windpipe. Interesting. When you take this passage from Leviticus, and it says, if a spot is white and it is... Um, in the flesh, and it's not deeper than you can see, and it has not turned white in the skin, and you take these letters, it spells the word corona. Now, I just think that's very interesting. And then when you, if you have it, Then it says, um, Vahis, vahis uh, Gir, uh, you shall shut him up, Ha Kohen, the Kohen, um, Hanege, Hanega, Shavat, Yamim, seven days. To me, I look at this and I'm thinking, like, the body of Messiah has failed a big test. And we all need to learn from it, family, for real. Because we, we saw this like gradually happen and we're like, it's just going to pass, it's going to pass, it's going to pass, it's going to pass, it's going to pass. And then we're all crammed in our homes. Right? Praise the Lord, there's some men of God out there that are saying like, I'm done with this stuff. We submitted to the government. But the Bible literally says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. We have rights in our constitution, the first and second amendment. Give us 
some freedoms that our government is trying to take away in this season to prepare us for the whole book of Revelation to pray, play itself out. I hope you're woke. W-O-K-E. I hope you are woke. For real. Avram, praise the Lord, Avram woke up. Avram needs to be woke. May spiritually, he's already woke. For real. You can sleep and stay foggy, or you can be awake. It says in the Psalms, the kings of the earth and the leaders conspire against the Holy One and His Messiah. There really is conspiracy going on on a global scale, family, for real. For real. See, the sages teach this. If we're saying, if we're like talking about people in gossip called Lashon Hara, that means you have an evil tongue. And see, the sages teach us something that I just found out. When you're gossiping about somebody and you're telling the truth, it's worse than lying because lying isn't even considered speech biblically. When you study the depths of what speech is, it actually is something that is created within the mind that's a reality that's coming forth and it comes from within. And when there's Bible passages that say the, the, the lips, not the mouth and throat, are what utter lies. External fabrications aren't even speech because they're not based in reality. That's why gossip and that's why hurting and slandering people by truth twisting is worse than flat out lying. How is this all connected to Passover and Haggadah telling the story? Pesach is the mouth speaks. In the traditional Passover story, Haggadah, it opens with these words. This is the bread of affliction that our fathers ate in Egypt as they were coming out. This is the bread of affliction. But this word lechem oni is amazing. It's got so much depth. What it can also mean is this. This is the bread about which one answers many things. There's deep mysteries that will be unlocked if you take seven days and do what the Bible says and eat matzah and abstain from fluffy bread. Why in the world would we do that? We're under the law? No. The Bible says to everybody from Moses' time did it. All the spirit-filled believers did it. The whole church, Jew and non-Jew, did it up until Yeshua did it, up until the church councils, Council of Nicaea, Passover's taken away, no more unleavened bread. Eat pig, eat bread, celebrate holidays with eggs. We're just following in the tradition of our Messiah. We are quartodeciman. Say, say that with me. We are 14thers. The first split, the first real split in the church happened because the Bishop of Rome tried to talk to Polycarp, who was trained by John, who was trained by Yeshua, and say, Listen, we're changing. We're like, we're not celebrating Passover and first fruits anymore. And Polycarp was like, You, uh, we just gonna have to agree to disagree. Because Yeshua taught John, John taught me, I have to observe the 14th. 
And so the 14thers, that was like a slang term against those like the, 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 the church itself, like the church that was getting leavened and changing and shifting. They, they put this brand on the 14thers and they're like, don't, don't be a 14ther. And the first real church split happened over Passover versus Easter. But many mysterious questions are answered as we eat matzah. The expression lechamoni can also mean the bread upon which we call out. Therefore, eating matzah is connected to our speech. Eating the matzah is one of God's ways to fix what comes out of our mouth. If we understand as we eat the matzah, it's deeper, it's much deeper than just spreading some whipped cream cheese on the matzah. We're physical beings doing physical things with physical manifestations resulting in spiritual dynamic change on the inside. The word oni equals the numeric value. It's the same as call, voice. The attribute every, every month... Every month has a letter, an attribute, a sign in the heavens. There's all of these connections to every single month, okay? And every month on Rosh Hashanah, I mean, on, uh, on, um, every month on, uh, on when we do new moons, Rosh Chodesh, I, I tell a little bit about that, Right? The attribute associated with the month of Nisan this month just so happens to be the attribute of the mouth speaking. So by answering the four questions in the traditional Haggadah, or, or at least telling the Passover story, why it says, it literally says, when your children come to you in that day, Ezra, Eliana, Navia, and say to you, why are we celebrating unleavened bread? And why are we eating matzah and bitter herbs? And why do we have lamb? Like literally your children have to ask the question. And it's your job to tell the story. When you tell the story, you're fixing the sins of the mouth. For real. See, we can rectify the covenant of speech if we just do what the Bible says. It's so much deeper than just we get together and worship and we eat the matzah. It's, it's more, family. The rectification of our speech continues through the counting of the Omer that we are commanded to recite aloud. This gives us a direct connection to the festival of Shavuot. And listen to this. The bread of affliction teaches mysteries as you eat. The bread of affliction is connected to voice. And it's with our voice that we've sinned. We get a time out. We break out of that mold by telling the Passover story. Then we're commanded to count the days. Then we ultimately get to this holiday where a voice comes from heaven. What? And it says in the Hebrew that they were so stunned as they watched Hebrew letters bounce out of the mouth of God. And it came down and their senses were combined and they saw and heard the voices coming off the mountain. And it landed over their head like a flame of fire and spoke to each one in their native tongue. First Pentecost. In the Hebrew it says all that. The fulfillment of it, our voices and mouth get filled with the Holy Spirit breath of God to such a point, ta-ta-ko-sha-ta, we begin to speak in a language that we've never learned. 
full rectification of the sins of Babel and bringing us all the way into new covenant reality. Slavery in Egypt, family, is called the exile of speech. It's called Galut Hadibur. Say that. Galut Hadibur. It's, see, when they were enslaved in Egypt, family, they didn't have... Look this way. I'll, re, I'll read all that in a minute. They didn't have the same freedoms that we have today. There was no freedom of speech. There was such a lockdown on speech, family, that Moses couldn't even talk. And family, that same system and spirit of Pharaoh is rising up in this generation to shut the mouths of spiritual leaders. Even as we speak, they're scared to go to church. They're scared to prophesy. They're scared to preach the gospel. When will a generation rise up, family? Will it be now that you will stand up and use your mouth to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? It's time for the church to wake up and get active in this season. And listen, we're moving towards a day where like literally this will be illegal. Then what? Then what? Have you ever heard of the Black Robe Regiment? You got to go study it. Yes. When I was first coming to the Sabbath and the feasts, God hit me with so much truth all within this little time frame. He showed me that about the Black Robe Regiment. He showed me about incorporation and how if you incorporated a church, and I'm not against incorporated churches, but he showed me that if you incorporate an assembly of the Most High, then the government can actually come in and tell you what to say and not to say. And then you have to stand up. We have to, in that generation, there's going to be many men very soon. Many men are going to have to break out of that system because they're going to try to come in and shut you down. That's one reason we never incorporated. Okay? But the Black Robe Regiment was a group of pastors that wore black robes, preached church, and had shotguns under their robes. I'm telling you, go study it. They were political activists, and they were men that were like militia men. The leaders used to be the pastors. They used to be the men that wanted to defend the Constitution family. So again, here we are in 2020. And I also found this out. 2020 is not perfect vision. It means it's, it's clarity at 20 feet away. Like your really good vision is like 2010 or 2015. It's better. This year, 2020, is actually like God is saying, like about that year on the Gregorian calendar, he's like, I'm kind of just focusing you in and giving you some clarity. It's not perfect, which I didn't know. It's clarity of vision. You can see the outline's really sharp. So here we are faced with a situation where we have to decide what are we going to do, family? Are we going to lay down and let the government, I know this is challenging, tell us what we can and cannot do? Are we going to have the spirit of the Maccabees and say, I'm sorry? See, what most of us don't know is that the state has no jurisdiction over the spiritual entity called the body of Christ. It's, it's not a matter... It's not a matter of submitting to authority. It's a matter of God's Word over anything else. It's a matter of what's called jurisdiction. 
Juris, say jurisdiction. There's no jurisdiction. Now, I'm not a rebel. My wife will tell you she's watched me spiritually submit to men of God that were very, very difficult men that everybody else would run from. I submitted my life, and I still know how to submit to godly men. And even our government, we took a couple weeks off. Why? We were following what protocol was. But by the Holy Spirit, He's told us, it's time to get back together. Right, Pastor? This is what you sent me. Freedom of religion, speech, press, rights of assembly. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. See, like the Torah is the constitution for Israel. You understand what I'm saying? Like Israel, like the grafted in and the natural. But in this United States, the constitution that we have was based off of Torah. And we have it. It's the law of our land. And pretty soon it's going to be going bye-bye. And this is a dress rehearsal, family. It's a wake-up call for the body of Messiah. That's what this really is. It's really what's going on. We need to be... How many of y'all were ready for this? I wasn't. I was not ready for all this to happen so quickly. And it shows us like where we're at in time. That they can turn the heat up that quick on us and we just lock down. For real. Praise the Lord, we're talking about it at least now. You know what I mean? May God raise up men and women in this generation that walk in discernment, that are woke, and that aren't afraid to speak truth. See, God was speaking to Moses very, very clearly, face to face. And even when God came in the burning bush, speaking to Moses... He was so trapped in the system, he couldn't talk. He's like, I can't, I, 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 I stutter, I can't do it. But if you read the story after they go to Sinai and the commands were given and he's on the mountain for that time period and he comes down, no more issues with speech. Something happened on Mount Sinai and something, I believe, could very possibly happen inside of us. As we use our mouth to count and as we wait for Shavuot, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Amen? The children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot. Prophetically, we're going to have to start living this out, I really believe. Like in the future, Passover is going to happen, and I think we need to start meeting in the woods with our bags and our Sukkot stuff. This isn't just in there like randomly, like they went from Ramses to Sukkot. It's a code. It's a wake-up call. It's time to say, why do you have your belt on, your shoes on, your bags packed, and your staff in hand waiting to leave in a moment's notice? Because one of these Passovers, we're going to be camping on the 15th. Right? That's when we're really going to have to trust each other. That's when you have to just trust each other. That's one of the reasons I believe that there's this rebellious doctrine going through our movement that says you don't need pastors, you don't need leaders, everybody's a leader. Just do what you want in your own eyes. The people did what was right in their own eyes, and that's a good thing all of a sudden. For real? Sukkot is in a place called the desert. Say desert. Now, Kevin, how do you say desert in Hebrew? Midbar. 
Bamidbar. They go to a place called Sukkot in a place called Bamidbar or Midbar, which is connected. This is the wilderness. Bamidbar, if you add the bait, is in Midbar, in the wilderness. But Midbar is wilderness or desert. So they go from Sukkot into Midbar, which has the root word Davar, which is again connected to speech and words. And Yahweh himself is called Davar Elohim, the word of God. So they go into a place in the desert called Midbar from speaking. There are four levels of creation. When Yahweh created, He made the inanimate objects, He made the plant life, He made the animal life, and He created beings in Hebrew called Midbar. Say that. They're speaking creatures. Like if I want to say in, in, in Hebrew, like I use this one a lot because I don't know much Hebrew. I say, Ani mi deber ketzat ivrit. And that means I can only talk a little bit of Hebrew. I can only speak a little Hebrew. Ani mi deber ketzat ivrit. Ketzat ma'aseh. Like a little of the law, right? The works of the law. Mi ketzat, right? Ma'aseh mi ketzat or something like that, right? It's, it's that, that's the word for a little. So... Um, now, what's interesting is when God, the thing that separates humans from the animal life is a higher level of consciousness that gives us the ability to speak. Again, going back to speech. Now, check this out in the Targums, how Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 is read, 2-7. Now, this is just English, this is just the most common, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the best of life, and he became a living soul. Now, the Targums have this very interesting translation, the Aramaic. It's like the Amplified Bible of the day, okay? That's really what the Targums were. The Lord God created Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed upon his face the breath of lives, and it became in Adam... A discoursing spirit. The Palestinian is amazing because it says, God created man in two formations. This is like really cool teaching. And took the dust from the house of the sanctuary. Really cool stuff. Have you ever looked into that, Pastor? That's some cool stuff right there. I'll share more about that later. And breathed into his nostrils the inspiration of life. And there was in the body of Adam the inspiration of a speaking spirit. The thing that takes us to a higher level is that we have neshama in us. See, animals are a nefesh. They are souls. They have mind, will, and emotion. But they don't have da'at. They don't have conscious awareness. See, you can take a cup of water and dump it on a dog's head. It doesn't know that the, the glass was made somewhere and that you had to go to the faucet and get water and that you stood over and poured on it. It has no conscious, it just knows it got way it shakes. What makes us different is this spiritual consciousness that gives us the ability to speak, which is why our speech is so important, family. It is the biggest thing that we've got to work on. And what happens is when we get frustrated, if we act based in our emotions, then we're going to always mess up with our speech. Always, 100% of the time. That's the kidney area. But if we'll pause and hold on, there's two kidneys and if we will connect with another person or the Holy Spirit before we speak, we'll do a lot better passing the tests of the mouth. Every Hebrew month has a letter associated with it. I'm like halfway there. I'm just kidding. I don't know how much is left, but it's been a while. I haven't taught in a while, so I don't know how many slides I have left, but hope you all are enjoying it. Y'all enjoying this so far? Every Hebrew month also has a letter associated with it. The letter to this month is what? Hey. Watch this all wrap itself up. The letter hey is breath. Hey. That's why you say hey. 
I don't know if that's real or not. She made that up. Let's hope one of y'all be like, yes. Hey is the first letter of speech, no matter what language you speak, because it's breath. And before you can talk, breath has to be formed in here and come out. Genesis 2 4. Eli toldot hashemayim v'ha'eretz. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Now, watch how this word here, last, you know, several teachings, I'm showing you the intricacies of the Hebrew big letters, little letters. You guys been watching? Okay. Some of you have not, but it's okay. It's on YouTube. Bahibaram. Eli told out Hashemayim v'ha'aretz. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Behibaram, when he created, um, beyom osot, asot, Yahweh. When Yahweh made them, Yahweh Elohim made them, um, the heavens and the earth. What's interesting is, one of the ways you can translate this, Eli told out, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth, Behibaram, when he created with a hay, with his breath. You can literally take this word, and it's when he created, but you can take it and say, in or with a hay, he created them. With his breath, Yahweh created everything. The bait is also, it's also the sun. With the sun's breath, he created everything. And Colossians tells us that same story, that it was by him, for him, and through him that all things were created and made. Yeshua is the creator of heaven and earth. Yeshua, listen, Yeshua is so connected to the Father that pre-existence they were like thought. Like Yeshua is the thoughts that are expressed through the mouth. The word, the thoughts, became flesh and dwelled among us. The Devar Elohim. The word of God is so intimately one with the Father that the Father thinks and the Son is the action of the thought. The head. With the hay, he created everything with breath. That's why when people get a new name, when you read in Genesis, they get the hay. They get the Holy Spirit. They get the breath added. Prophetically, that's also speaking of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The hay and the pay are connected because the pay is the mouth speaking and the hay is what's coming out of the mouth. Bereshit bara Elohim va'et ha'eretz. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Right? Watch this. See this letter? Bait. You can actually put a pay around it because the sages teach that the hay is the mouth that spoke a hidden bait inside the pay. Do you see the bait in black? This is a B right here. When you write the letter pay, there's a B inside of it. And the pay is the hay that creates the B for bare sheet. I know, I like this kind of stuff. To me, this is absolutely amazing insights, okay? The pay, mouth, has a hay in it, and when the hay comes out, it's got a bait. It's absolutely amazing. So it's with the mouth that we can create things. 
Did you know the Bible says life and death are what? You can speak your reality into existence by cursing yourself and everybody around you and have a warped, twisted, unhealthy mind. Or you can be positive and speak life and have a healthy thought life. Think on these things. Like brother said it upstairs earlier. Whatever is good, holy, just, pure, not the news, not coronavirus. Please, it is everywhere. Just don't look at it. Your life will be fine if you don't watch TV. You might have a little bit more peace in your heart if you don't watch TV. You wouldn't even know about a corona nothing if you didn't have a TV. We'd be living normal. The TV did it. Now, oh, y'all, TV, anti TV people. TV's not bad. Okay? But if you sit down and couch potato, you got a problem. Okay? No. <laughs> You can use the TV for evil or good. Listen, Korah caused a great rebellion. Like challenge Moses. Moses is like, all right, get your get your stuff and meet me by the tent tomorrow. Let Yahweh decide. So even though I always think this is funny, Cor is like, you're not the leader. He did what Moses said. <laughs> okay, I'll do what you say, but you're not the leader. But you don't tell me what to do, but I'll do it. <laughs> and they show up right the next day. And you know the story. Like he's like, how do you know you're the leader? He's like, I'll tell you what. I'm just gonna throw something out there. If the earth swallows you, I'm the leader. Okay, right? It happens. And then the story's like this. Like, everybody went, ah, get away from all their homes, and there we go down, alive into the grave, right? Then it closes up. How in the world that happens? I don't know. It's true. Then, the next day, like, a whole family died. All the rebels died. And what does it say? They woke up and like, Moses, I don't like you anymore. They complained. A plague strikes. The leadership does what? They fall on their face. That's where we failed. A plague. Now, literally, I don't think this thing is as big as everybody's saying it is. Yes, it's a real sickness. Okay. Be careful, Matthew. I just, we're being manipulated with the numbers and all the fear. But some people, it's a plague. There's a reality out there that we got to wake up to. Yes, for real. Why do we have to tell lies and agree with lies? Why? Am I worried about likes? On, I don't really care. Turn it off if you don't want to hear me. We need to wake up. We are lied to on every front. You think the media is telling you the truth? The same people that want to force you to get a vaccine with evil stuff in it that's going to castrate the men and put poison inside you and warp your DNA? For real? They're telling us the truth? Wake up, people! What does it say? The priests. Moses and Aaron fell on their face. Moses said, take your fire pan. Put fire from the altar. Put incense on it. What is incense? The prayers of the saints. Saints. 
your mouth. And hurry. Run to the midst of the people. And Aaron took it and ran to the middle of the people. He added incense and made atonement for the people. You can pray somebody into the kingdom, or you can surf Facebook and watch that person die and be thrown into a lake of fire. What, buddy? That could very well happen because people are on Facebook too much. He ran with incense to the midst of the people, made atonement, and he stood between the living and the dead. Where's that generation of people? Not that the virus is going to kill them. They're dead men walking. They're dead in sin and trespasses until they're made alive and regenerated with the blood of Yeshua. See, these people out there are scared. They have no hope. And the enemy's got us tricked into quarantining ourselves and not talking. And we've laid around long enough. Amen. So I'm just here to encourage you. Let's get out and proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Rise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Thick darkness has covered the earth and fog has fallen upon all the people. But on you will rise the glory of the Lord. And upon you His goodness will be seen. Amen? Rise and shine, family. Rise and shine, you three people that are still watching. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Wake up and let's get out and preach the gospel. Amen. Let's all stand up. Pastor Tom, come close us in prayer because you might want to preach too. I do want to say something, and uh, I know it's a, a miracle, I know. But the last week I was studying the book of Daniel, and I was, um, I was studying the book of Daniel, and I was running to, and I come to a place <clears throat> where it says, you know, I think King James says the children in that day will do exploits. And I begin to, I know I've quoted many times about exploits, what that could be. But as I studied it yesterday, it actually means to have a, um, a holy resound for the law and the commandments of God. It actually means to be unpersuaded to do opposite of what God wants you and I to do. That's actually what it means. Of course, there's signs and wonders that follow because they're doing what God told them to do. But I want to encourage you, listen. This is our time. I believe it's on my heart. The same thing that he's been sharing this morning is what's been on my heart. We have got to go and get out there and be a voice that they don't hear. Amen? Amen. There, nobody's telling them any good thing. All they know is this is the end of time. This is the end of life. Everybody's, everybody's talked about this, and now I'm scared to death to go near you or to touch you. And people are actually perishing. So listen, please go. Please go. Father, as we come before you today, we are thankful before you, Lord. Yes. Truly, how good and how pleasant it was, Lord, to be dwelling here together, Father, in unity. And we are thankful before you. But, Father, I pray that today, Lord, and as we go through the rest of this service, that true resurrection power would rise up on the inside of us, Lord, and you would testify to the gospel with power, Lord. 
That the words You would give us to say would go into others and create life, Lord, and not death. Father, that we would scatter the enemy and break down the death and break down the darkness, Lord, with a light, Father. So Lord, as we enter into this time of, 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 of eating of the unleavened bread, the, Father, I pray that our mouth is clean. I pray our heart is clean. But Father, above all things, I pray for the, for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and the power of the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah would so grip the body, Lord, they would walk in newness of life, Lord, and not be dead any longer. Father, raise us up, Father, like You said in the Word, Lord, that the power of the resurrection would be evident in us, Lord, in our walk, in our talk, in our thoughts. Father, bless the body. Bless all those that are watching. Father, encourage your people today, we ask in Yeshua's name. Amen.